On April 2, 1982, without a declaration of war, Argentina invades the islands it calls the Malvinas, then controlled by the United Kingdom, which refers to them as the Falklands. London prepares its counterattack. Both countries claim sovereignty over this isolated archipelago with its hostile climate and are prepared to go to war to control it. In this video, let's trace on a map the origins and evolution of this conflict that has continued for over three centuries. Historically, the archipelago is isolated and uninhabited. The climate is harsh, with cool temperatures, high humidity, and powerful winds. No forests grow here. The coasts provide shelter for marine birds and mammals, such as penguins and seals. Recently, ancient traces of what seems to be hunting against the latter were discovered on New Island. This suggests that men, probably Yagans, who originated from Tierra del Fuego and were skilled navigators, occasionally came here to hunt. During the 16th century, many European explorers passed through the area and may have seen the archipelago. However, there's still debate today about who was the very first to discover it. It could have been Amerigo Vespucci during his explorations, or perhaps one of the ships from Ferdinand Magellan's expedition. Many other explorers, mainly Spanish and English, likely spotted this archipelago roughly 500 kilometers from the continent. But initially, European powers showed little interest. In 1690, English navigator John Strong explores this archipelago, entering the strait between the two main islands, which he names Falkland Sound in tribute to one of the ship's owners, the Viscount of Falkland in Scotland. The crew is the first to land on the archipelago and discover, to their amazement, an endemic mammal that resembles a mix between a wolf and a fox. The animal is named the Falkland Islands Wolf. It may have been brought there by the Yagans. Subsequently, Britain shows increasing interest in the territory, but Spain vehemently opposes any foreign settlement, fearing that the archipelago will become a base for expeditions threatening its Pacific coast riches, especially the gold and silver of Peru. In 1763, at the end of the Seven Years' War, France loses and cedes a large part of its American colonies to Great Britain, which now dominates the seas with its powerful royal navy. Frenchman Louis-Antoine de Bougainville then dreams of establishing new colonies. He organizes an expedition and founds Port St. Louis, the first permanent colony in the archipelago, which he calls the Ile Malouine in tribute to the inhabitants of St. Malo in Brittany. The first settlers are mainly Acadian fishermen. Along the coasts, they hunt seals and sea lions, and on land, they import cattle that they let roam free. Just two years after the arrival of the French, a British expedition arrives in what they now call the Falklands, unaware that the French are already there. In the northwest, they establish their colony, which they name Port Egmont. At the same time, the Spanish, upon learning of Port St. Louis, strongly oppose their French allies' ambitions. After negotiations, they take over the colony in exchange for financial compensation. Port St. Louis becomes Puerto Soledad, and the French name for the archipelago is retained and translated to become Las Islas Malvinas. In the following years, the Spaniards discover the presence of the British and demand their departure, but without success. In 1770, the governor of Buenos Aires sends a significant military fleet that expels the British. Furious, London prepares for war. Spain looks for the support of its French ally, but the latter indicates that it is not ready to go to war. The Spanish authorities, after negotiations with Great Britain, officially disapprove of the action of the governor of Buenos Aires. 
The British colony is restored, and both countries coexist on the archipelago, although both continue to claim the entire territory. In Great Britain, the economic situation is difficult, and tensions rise with their North American colonies who rebel. Struggling, London recalls various isolated troops from around the world, including those in the Falklands. When leaving Port Egmont, the soldiers leave behind a plaque indicating that the archipelago remains a British possession. However, as the American Revolutionary War rages, Spain takes advantage of the situation to destroy Port Egmont. Only about a hundred Spaniards remain in the Malvinas, mainly soldiers and convicts. But life on the harsh archipelago leads to a gradual decline in the population. In the early 19th century, Napoleon's France occupies Spain. Independence movements emerge in Latin America, and the troops present in the Malvinas are called back to reinforce the power in Montevideo. In 1811, they leave Puerto Soledad, leaving behind a plaque indicating that the archipelago is a Spanish possession. Subsequently, only fishermen and seal hunters continue to occasionally visit. In 1816, the United Provinces of the Rio de la Plata declare their independence and claim sovereignty over the Malvinas. The new country encourages Louis Vernet, a merchant from Hamburg, to establish a colony there in exchange for being able to exploit the island's resources without paying taxes. He then founds Puerto Luis on the former Puerto Soledad, but foreign ships do not recognize his authority and continue to hunt seals. He then captures some U.S. ships. In response, the United States sends a military ship that ravages Puerto Luis. The British take advantage of this and send a fleet to take control of the territory. A new capital called Stanley is founded further south. The hunting of cattle imported by the French and which have gone wild forms the backbone of the island's economy. In North America, after a victory against Mexico, the United States obtains California, where gold is discovered, causing a rush to the west. As the land route is dangerous, many prefer the maritime route around the continent. Stanley becomes an important stop for supplies and ship repairs before the dangerous passage of Cape Horn. The colony develops rapidly. The British also import sheep with the aim of organizing their breeding. But in doing so, they eradicate the predator Falkland Islands wolf. The archipelago also becomes an important stopover for whalers hunting in the surrounding seas. In 1914, the Panama Canal is inaugurated, shortening the journey between the two coasts of the United States. Stanley then loses some of its importance. During World War I, German Admiral Maximilian von Spee, based in Asia, attempts a surprise attack on Stanley, but encounters a significant British fleet. An important naval battle ensues, which turns in favor of the British. After the war, a series of measures are taken to protect endangered species, such as seals and whales. After World War II, the United Kingdom faces financial difficulties and has to deal with independence movements around the world. The country consequently shows less interest in the Falkland Islands, which now have a population of about 3,000. Argentina continues to claim sovereignty over the archipelago, and in 1953, President Juan Perón proposes to buy the islands from the United Kingdom, but the offer is rejected. In 1964, Argentine Miguel Fitzgerald flies on a small plane to the islands and lands on the Stanley racetrack. He raises an Argentine flag and gives the locals a letter demanding the end of British occupation of the archipelago. 
Two years later, a group of Argentines hijack a civilian plane heading to Tierra del Fuego and lands it in Stanley. They then take locals hostage, but are eventually captured and sent back to Buenos Aires to be tried. In 1968, Miguel Fitzgerald repeats his expedition, this time accompanied by journalists. However, this time, obstacles have been installed on the racetrack in Stanley. The plane attempts to land on a road, but crashes, and Fitzgerald and the journalists are taken prisoner. However, all these actions are not without consequences. On the one hand, London reinforces security around the archipelago by patrolling with a military ship. And on the other hand, the local population now perceive Argentina as a threat and prefer to remain tied to the United Kingdom rather than risk invasion by Argentina. Tina. In 1970, the company that manages the only maritime connection between Stanley and Montevideo announces the imminent end of this activity. The archipelago, with no other connection to the outside world, risks being completely isolated. But in the United Kingdom, the economic situation is difficult, and the country doesn't want to take on the responsibility of opening new routes. The country secretly approaches Argentina and offers to manage, at its expense, the communication routes to the islands. The agreement is officially signed in 1971, and Argentina opens an airline connecting Stanley to Comodoro Rivadavia. The inhabitants of the archipelago go from a four to five day journey to Montevideo to about a five hour flight to Buenos Aires. Moreover, Argentina takes over the postal service, provides fresh produce, opens access to its universities and hospitals, and even sends Spanish teachers to teach the language on site. But in 1976, a military coup takes place in Argentina. The junta that comes to power demands a return on the investment in the Malvinas. However, in the United Kingdom, the economic situation is too complicated to take over if Argentina cuts communication routes. The locals feel trapped. In 1981, Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher cuts costs and reduces military spending. The ship patrolling in the Falklands must end its mission. For Argentina, this is a sign that the archipelago is within reach. On April 2, 1982, without a declaration of war, Argentine special forces land on the archipelago and quickly seize Stanley. In London, Margaret Thatcher chooses not to relinquish the territory and sends a naval task force to regain control. Meanwhile, on the archipelago, the Argentines set up their administration. Spanish is imposed, as well as Argentine post stamps, and the new authorities even attempt to drive on the right side of the road. Ultimately, the British Army regained control of the archipelago. The United Kingdom then changes its strategy and now invests massively to develop and protect the Falkland Islands. A new military base is built and a civilian airline is opened, directly connecting to the UK. Furthermore, the country now approaches Chile to compensate for the closure of routes with Argentina. Finally, the local economy is developed, roads are built, and the archipelago discovers that its seas are rich in squid, revitalizing the economy. In 1998, Argentine President Carlos Menem, during a visit to London, reaffirms that his country continues to claim the Malvinas. In March 2013, a referendum is held in the archipelago. Unsurprisingly, 99.8% of the participants want to maintain the status of a British overseas territory. Argentina insists that this doesn't change its claim, only taking into account the territorial aspect and rejecting the locals' opinion, considering them settlers. 
today, the archipelago is inhabited by about 3,700 residents and 1,700 soldiers. Squid fishing, tourism, and sheep farming are the main sources of income, while more and more excavations are being made on the seabed in search of oil.